on November 11, a total of 5.4 million eligible voters will be adding to the polling units to cast their ballots in electing Kogi, Imo, and Bayesa states' governors. The off-cycle governorship polls will be the first elections to be conducted under President Bola Tinumbu-led administration. As the commission prepares for the off-cycle elections, the chairperson of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, has said that the polling unit results of Bayesa Imo and Kogi State's governorship elections will be uploaded on its result viewing portal, HIREL, as a matter of legal provision. Only God knows the meaning of that, to be honest with you but did not promise to prompt the polling unit results will be uploaded onto the portal. The off-cycle elections in Imo, Kogi, and Bayesa states are scheduled for November 11, 2023. Joining me to discuss this is Safiya Bichi, Head of Knowledge, Management, and Learning, Yaga, Africa. Safiya... It's a pleasure having you guesting on Plus Politics. Hello, hello. hello Sophia. Yes, hello, good evening. Thanks for having me on the show. The pleasure is all ours, to be honest with you. I guess the best place to start would be how is an organization as reputable in election supervision and monitoring as yours, Yaga Africa, how are you people preparing for the oncoming gubernatorial elections in the three states? Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I would like to start by saying this will be a very depressing election because this will be the first uh, um, of the election, the election, as well as under the new election, as you highlighted. Again, this will be the that will be conducted after a series of judgments we saw uh, 2020, which actually put the tweet, like to ask 2022 issue. Talking about the position, Yaga Africa is deploying. Uh, of 300 of other emo states as well as uh, OG states at the moment. That we are sure of deployed over 320 in each state, in that in both in OG and by outside respectively. Jointly, I can say that we are deploying 700. Uh, 650 observers in the two states. And the observers will be observing and transmitting election reports to our portal where we're supposed to be uh, using the pair of subsidiary methodology to observe and analyze On the other hand, Yaga Africa is going to be deploying an election of the so called ERAS, which is a result analysis which depends solely on the results of into the INEC I you agree with me this was also your opening when you said that uh, the INEC um uh, stated that INEC will be uploading a drop into that but the Aga Africa will be working for downloading and analyzing and this stuff and okay uh, Sophia uh, Sophia what is happening in the area? Uh, hello, Sophia. B before we get to uh, uploading uh, election results, we need to speak into some of the realities confronting us at this juncture. Presently, we read reports of alleged violence, uh, violent incidents in, in Kogi, especially. Uh, what has been the feedback? that uh, Yaga Africa is getting from your from your agents on the ground or from your monitoring uh, mechanism or system? Uh, thank you 
so much. Uh, exactly as you said, there has been series of reports and cases of electoral violence in both Imo and UN by Elsa State. Uh, we've seen different stakeholders calling uh, the different actors to stay calm. But I think uh, in the last few, uh, the issue has been a little bit more prominent in uh, Imo State. Imo is because of the security in Imo State and the some level of apartheid. We've also seen that uh, people participating in election of the victim of political activities have become a target uh, uh, in, 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 in the state. This people must not necessarily be just political actors, but in some state, sorry, some uh, in some uh, LGBT people state basically, these kind of persons have become uh, agents of political attacks. But coming back to Kogi, I think the reason why Kogi is or not is because unlike other states, Kogi's race is more of a five five hot race. We know that Imo uh, and Bayelsa is a three hot race, which is between three dominant political parties. But Kogi seems to be a five hot race, which makes um, the election a very complicated election. And the most interesting thing is that both states, Kogi and, and Bayelsa, are not in terms of in, 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 in terms of uh, History of political political vote. So it's not something new, but it's something that we need to keep conducting. And we hope that uh, the security agencies will be on the street as we move close to the election. And perhaps uh, the political aspect will change again because this violence game is, uh, I think, is something uh, uh, not the only tool they can put for political. Situation. So this is what we all need to start up to and also some of the uh, early warning that could also foretold this uh, security effort for this to be the G. Uh, it should not be what, what they use so that we can also match some of these, these pockets or indicators of violence where uh, for me as an individual oh, 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 is to say that are you still there? The line, the line has been very rough. Unfortunately, uh, we may need to call Safia back. Or is she still on? Yes, I can still hear you. Fantastic. Okay. Um, it's just inevitable at this, you know, at this point to ask you what are people like you doing, especially uh, the non-partisan entities in our political sphere, what are we doing to combat the very debilitating effect of voter apathy. Every major election, we see the number of those who engage the electoral system dwindle. This is dangerous for our democracy. Uh, how would you want to respond to that? Yeah, so uh, we've, we've, been, we've been seeing a lot of intervention last year, that's going to include some of the interventions is to, uh, apart from voter, is to provide an environment that increases the opportunity for voters, voters to call their card, which is a requirement for voter. We've also taken actions to encourage people to provide grounds by also helping them as people online speakers. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not, uh, so that's some of the initiatives where they get. Uh, what with the moment is bringing out good education, uh, being a peer to peer aspect. I think in, in next week, we're launching some radio programs in, in the state to, to a kind of uh, wake the people up and look at uh, post the 23 general election. It has been a laid back and political activities. And this is a huge of a general 
because going through a hectic election, you are you are you are likely to go low on momentum in the election in that city. So we're also calling on that stakeholders engage citizens to engage voters. Uh, but the only thing we can, the only one I think that is not that the safety of these voters. But if we are having drums of war, how can these people willingly go out to participate on that Sunday? But I also want to bring attention to this argument. There are people that say voter turnout is not important, that non turnout is a form of voter participation. Uh, these are some of the things we also need to interrogate. And I know that there are a lot of scholarly work, but really, again, we need to also have participation. So, so, Sophia, we really have to our... go because the line is very rough. We sure do want to appreciate you and thank you. Indeed, your organization, Yaga Africa, and the other, other uh, actors out there who go a long way to enlighten us and enrich our democracy. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.